it necessarily mandates it is basically how much they are going to put effort on that particular project generally we take uh, 150 hours again like uh, like i said not necessarily every company will take 150 hours uh, but close to like some companies take 160 some people take 120 or 140 but generally the kind of most of the companies take 150 hours one ft means 150 hours but that is not actually required here what your question had given is these are the type of projects and i could have made it very complex also right so these are the projects and different characteristics you could have and i think one group had tried doing that also like checklist model uh, putting that which actually will be much more beneficial for the company here if you see like uh, this simple so the project net benefit net benefit means you have taken the cost calculation also right so this is my revenue or this is my profit what i'm going to get so this is the net benefit right revenue minus minus cost right whatever cost you are going to incur in the project now i have different ft requirements for each of the project right uh, there are hr project telecom and all those projects each of them have different full-time employee requirement i think most of the i think only one or two groups uh, did it correctly uh i think all of you have forgotten this was mentioned any two of the three teams could be used for government services project right because if you say this is the only project where all the three teams were given the number for each all the teams were given right so that's why it was mentioned so for this is the only project in which because the other project if you see data center is one project where only one team is working that is the prag team no other team can work there if if you choose that project other project generally have two teams selected if you start that project that means some ft from bangalore some ft from other location has to be utilized or any any two location has to be utilized this is the only location where there are three teams but if you read there it is written, written clearly that any two of the three teams could be used right so i can start this project with 4034 right in that case these resources are not required or 3430 or 3040 so there are different combinations right it is not necessary that i have to use all those three team members or three fps right it is written that this is the combination of any two teams i can go with bangalore and sanghai sanghai or prague prague or bangalore right then obviously x indicates that it's not can be a, uh, you cannot use that team for that project uh, and this is important management has also decided one hr project must be undertaken but not both what that means no matter what you select one hr project need to be there so you have to start with that right most of you i think uh, not most of you some of you have done resource wise calculation right how many resources are utilized that is a good way to look into the project but that will come later on right when you are trying to increase your project productivity here the simple case is which are the project i should select based on the project net benefit right then there are many ways to look into this uh, which projects will give me the like the regulator there will be certain regulatory or legal requirement uh, which project will have much more tangible benefits right which uh, projects i have to take though benefits are less but it will improve employee morale right so there are many ways to look into this but in this particular case what we are trying based on the net benefit you select the project and you have gone through the like it is not as it is if i say that there are six uh, shortfall of the uh, let's say resource requirement it is not i cannot start the project before starting the project you have to have a plan so when I say plan again, that will add up to your cost, which calculation already have done, right? So you cannot simply justify that. Okay, I have only shortfall of four resources, six resources, ten resources. Even then, I'm going to select that uh, project, unless you have a plan. Unless you say that because uh, remember all these project or any any project you take, right? If you do not have resources, getting those resources and starting working on that, it will take a lot of time. So those information is not there. If you are telling something like that, again, you have to justify, right? 
have is keep your uh, mic on mute so i think uh, half of the groups have written like that you have two gen projects telling that okay now we have four sort full of 50 or five sort full of 50 still then we are going to select that project right that is not possible in reality unless you have a backup plan or a solid plan that okay within you can hire those within one month or already offer letter has gone they are joining within one month or two months and that cost has been already calculated because when i say four resources here salary structure has not been given right when i say project net benefit this is the salary structure of whatever resources required right what is there so hr processes i am getting a, a net benefit of two thousand dollars with 30 bangalore resources 40 sangai resources if i say additional four resources will be required right then what are the cost of those four resources i am not sure which location they'll be hired from i'm not sure right so in that case that justification won't work right if you had a kind of detail it out okay this is taking 1.5 of bangalore cost or uh, sangai cost then also i'm making profit then still you could have justified so the the main point what i'm trying to make is though you made uh, at least few groups are made attempt calculating the resource wise benefit you did not elaborate it further and you cannot keep it blank saying that okay any of six resources are required and which is a small number or still we will take that project we will select that project and go ahead with it right no company will approve if you do not have a solid plan for that right so keeping within the constraint constraint of 60 resources in bangalore 40 resources in, resources in shanghai and 40 in prague without doing calculation also you can look into these figures and uh, like just like a logical reasoning questions you know for sure that you have to select one of the hr projects right either hr process one and hr process two that is mandatory right your main aim is to again get the maximum benefit project net benefit right so which one you will select uh, one or two group also had done certain calculation mistake also i'm not sure which group but so now if all of you know that this means not necessarily have to put all the three teams any two teams can be selected for the project comment or services so which are the few project i should select for my uh, like kind of maximizing the net benefit when i know that i have to select mandatory hr processes one Anyway, try to rework on that calculation. If we have time, we'll... Yeah, go on. Are you asking the answer? Like yes. For which, uh, sir, like uh, in my group, one option was like taking HR project two and uh, government okay. service project one. Okay, what was the answer coming? What was the total benefit? Uh, 3,000 plus 6,000, 9,000. Okay. Anybody got a better number than that? More than 9,000? Because the idea is, see, net benefit is like your NPV, right? That is the, after deducting your cost, everything out. So which are the project you will select? If you are crossing 9,000, if some group can say me that, okay, no, if I select this project within remaining within the constraint. Because remember, once you cross the constraint without any, detailed plan that how you will overcome that constraint because uh, then i'll say that uh, let us select all the projects right except those constraints that okay you cannot uh, go beyond two uh, telecom projects and one accounting projects so out of 13 i'll select 10 projects because everywhere i'm getting money right remember when to take per resource money and when to take total money right imagine a scenario if somebody says uh, per uh, per month of work i'm going to pay you this much money let's say like this salary you get right after detecting cost after whatever you will get let's say forty thousand or fifty thousand rupees of money 
then other way around for your effort what you are getting right here we are not calculating your effort here the thing is that after your effort after everything gone you are getting 50000 rupees salary same thing with the project also because that is something written is net benefit it is not the revenue net benefit means after your whatever money you get you deduct your whatever project cost your effort cost is inside that project cost then still you are making money right so that time you will not say that question that whether it is i'm getting 5000 10000 or 50000 whatever money you will get you will take because that is a profit to you right okay uh, go through it and do the calculation uh, i have already uh, shared the marks for that assignment but yes uh, i liked uh, for some of the groups uh, who has done the calculation uh, because again, again that same thing happens one or two group uh, might have done other groups because i see the calculation and the format is same so that's why i'm not uh, taking those names but yes uh, whoever has done uh, made a good attempt trying to calculate resource wise profit benefit that shows that at least you thought about it right but here actually the idea is what is what are the project will maximize my net benefit right so any any question that on assignment or any uh, like kind of concerns on that assignment did you get that assignment clearly or still any doubt on that okay so if not so uh, i just yeah. had one question yeah uh, from sure. that assignment for example uh, prague division has a shortfall of minus 14 Hmm. Now, Bangalore has unutilized FTE of suppose 20. Yeah. So, can the justification be that uh, since the shortfall at Prague is minus 14, hmm. uh, the, uh, the Bangalore division can use the, uh, use that? Uh, in this case, particularly, see, that's why I told, like, uh, the uh, case I could have met many more complex, right? Uh, people can move from one location to other, right? But generally, it won't happen, right? In the actual project uh, scenario, uh, and I had knowingly had taken those three locations. Uh, each of them has a different, actually, same engineering resource. We used to pay $73 in Prague, $48 in Shanghai, and $28 in Bangalore. Same type of resource, right? So there are many challenges moving one resource to other, saying that, okay, this resource will work on there. Most of the times, client won't agree. Some projects, if they are from Europe, they'll say that, no, the resource has to be there in that location. Uh, China laws are again more stringent. They will not send any resource again, unless it is a uh, like uh, big companies like Facebook or, or Google. So, so the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, uh, the approach is not bad. If you say that, okay, why don't I, if I have 14 resources, 10 resources in Bangalore, why can't I? Because they're sitting idle, right? Ideal scenario, if all the locations are inside India, that happens. Let's say some people are within Gurkhaw and uh, some people, your project is in Bangalore. It can happen, right? But whenever you are managing a multi-country project, right? These kind of restrictions generally there, right? It is not easy to start a work uh, with a few resources from outside country, unless you have a plan for it. So that's why if you see the H1B visa, right? Because customer will say that no, the resource cannot work from Bangalore or uh, Chennai or Pune. They have to be here in one year or three year in uh, USA or whichever location. That's why most people like if you know IT project managers move there. It is not that they cannot work from here, right? Most of the work can be done remotely also, right? Managing people, managing resources. Uh, but uh, sometimes there is a requirement that they have to go there, right? And that's why Suggestion is not bad, but managing it, it will be difficult. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions related to the your assignment? Okay, um, but uh, again, repeating, uh, some of you actually, uh, I was happy that at least you had gone through that case. Because see, getting answer is not a big thing, right? Uh, but uh, you have met some of you, at least some groups have met it good attempt of finding different solutions and actual scenario actually that will matter right if you give those kind of suggestions and who knows like in some project it can happen also right 
uh, EPTGG Bangalore resource can work remotely from here and the Shanghai project. And some of you who have just calculated the productivity of workers, right? My intention is to maximize the resource kind of productivity, right? So that I'll make sure that nobody is sitting idle, right? That is a good approach, uh, good thinking process, right? So coming back to today's discussion, we will uh, focus on the first part, project planning. Remember the five steps of your project, starting with the project planning, then scheduling, then the execution, then the control monitoring happens parallelly, right? Whenever you are executing a project, parallelly you are controlling whether you are meeting the cost uh, schedule, there are no kind of unknown risks, then kind of changing any time uh, requirements are there, changing those things. So that is the control and monitoring and towards the end project closure, right? So in some cases, it is a legal requirement to close projects formally, right? So those are the five steps, starting with project planning, scheduling, execution, monitoring and controlling and project closure. So briefly, we'll discuss about project planning. Again, each of them, like there are many ways to go about project planning, but again, main concept uh, we are going to discuss today. So whenever we talk about project planning, then what does it mean, right? Who is going to do what resources? When they are going to do that, right? That is the scheduling part. Why they are going to do that? Whatever activities they are going to do, why they are going to do? It should not. So that is where your scope part comes, right? Each of their activities, right? need to be associated with your scope, right? Then where, right? And the same question what uh, oh, Jaida was asking, I guess. Resources from different locations, right? Sometimes there will be requirement that no resources has to be co-located. They have to be in that country to start working. How they are going to do that, right? Again, like depending upon the work, right? Some work can be as simple as creating a website, as to building a software, building an application. Some can be very, uh, like kind of complex, right? Launching a spacecraft to Mars, right? What kind of technology is required? Are we people are trained? Do we have uh, specialized equ equipment required? We do not have that right now. Then what exactly they are going to do, right? So that is the that is what we are going to discuss. That is the work breakdown structure, right? So all these W and J H comes under your planning document. So again, like uh, think about a very complex project launching a uh, space scout like what SpaceX is doing currently, right? And uh, this is where the kind of uh, Elon Musk's ingenuity came, right? No, where no one before him thought about uh, whether when we are launching a spacecraft, why can't we use that again, right? And when he went and asked, actually he's not a kind of a rocket engineer, right? He doesn't have that kind of PhD or MTech. He has whatever the like book is knowledge, reading some books and all those things. But he had a simple question. He went on and in a meeting, he asked the NASA engineers and people laughed about it, right? Knowingly it, uh, on his face, Are, this is impossible. What are you telling? Uh, this is the kind of temperature it goes through. We, we cannot reuse it. We we'll go and read about it. And he did the same thing. He went on and read about it. So no here it is written that it cannot be done, right? Then he realized that if there is a possibility, right? He did not know how to do it, but he realized that if it is a possibility that we can send rockets and reuse it again, right? Because the aim is, aim is not the sending a rocket to space, right? The aim is we are sending satellites. For that, we require some vehicle which will send that, right? So those rockets are vehicles, space vehicles like cars we use, why can't that, uh, it will only for one time, right? Because when we are using our vehicles, it is not that, okay, we will use it for one time and then it is done, right? It is not like that. So now he started reading and started questioning, then realized that the total cost of launch can be actually reduced by 10 times. That means X by 10, if it is right now, it is $100 million. Actually, if they can relaunch it, that means they can reuse the rocket, the vehicle which takes the satellite from point A to point B. They can reuse it. Then the reduction will be by 10 times. That means right now if it is taking around $100 million, 
they can do it within 10 million dollars then that is a solid problem to work on right so imagine a person obviously he has money right uh, in one interview he was telling something he had after uh, selling the stake in the paper he had around 120 million dollars he divided there are four projects he wanted to work with and divided all the money and he was staying some part of his life in rented room but the main point is that he found a complex problem which everybody thought uh, cannot be completely done or impossible and started working on that obviously right now we are uh, talking about him because he became successful right if he was unsuccessful we would have been reading that same case study as a unsuccessful projects right so at the end basically success matters right let others uh, do not never fool you on that uh, the point is definition of that right uh, definition of any cell definition of project has to be critical and most of the times projects fail because that part is not clear so in his case creating that project the first statement is the use of that space vehicles which will reduce your cost by 10 times so that has the objective right that is the why part why you are doing it if that is not clear others won't matter because others are basically just a part or kind of part and parcel of that so the first part of project and most of the times in companies what happens somebody just imagined or somebody had a thought okay why we don't do this but it's not that why we should do it right if you are able to convince yourself and to your team what will be the benefit then you start working on that right and it can be intangible benefits also right not necessarily it will be always about revenue but that why should come first so in the project planning stage so first part obviously selection we have discussed then creation of project proposal uh, where the charter project charter comes selection of project manager so this is where in the charter document uh, which uh, i was showing last class last to last class actually so that is where your first time mention of project manager comes right who will be leading that project so once you have project manager now everything is on him right when i say everything on him he is the coordinator he has to work with others and get it done right it is not that every he has to have the knowledge of everything but yes he has to have the coordination capability of with all the stakeholders so what are the components of project planning so project there is a something called project planning document all these should be part of that chapter and scope which was already there before the selection of project manager then schedule which is the main thing a project manager need to have a handle on need to know how to create a schedule how to manage a schedule how to control a schedule then resources right uh, if we have time uh, we'll talk about project resource management it is little bit complex right because generally what happens uh, whenever we are talking about project it is a matrix structure those people will be actually employed by different teams some of them will be sales and marketing some of them will be engineering team uh, human resources team testing team uh, plant or the assembly line team but for that three months or six months they are reporting to you they are working with you not necessarily under you they are working with you right and that is the complexity their actual reporting happens to their managers functional managers somebody from engineering still will be reporting to engineering manager somebody from hr he will be reporting to the senior hr manager but for that three to six months they are working with you without having the that reporting capability because unless you have that capability how will you manage them how will you make sure that they are working on that project right and that is somewhere the mismatch happens unless your organizations gives you that autonomy gives you that authority sometimes that becomes a challenge only with your networking capability only with your uh, personality it is not always be possible to manage the project resources some part of authority has to come with the project manager and some companies do fail in that if they do not have or do not have provided that kind of capability or authority to the project manager it will become very difficult then the budgeting and costing part which is a, again major thing most of the times there will be someone from finance department who will help you on that but the final ownership is with you right 
So I, you cannot say that, okay, I do not know how the finance team did that. Uh, so they might have done a mistake. When you are presenting that document, project, budget, cost, resource, schedule, everything, you are the owner. You have to take responsibility if there is any problem with that. So each one of them, there will be functional managers who will be supporting you, but final ownership lies with you. Similarly for project quality, so there will be people who have Six Sigma certified, lean management certified. So they will help you to design the project quality document. But again, the ownership lies with you. You are the owner of that document process for that project. Then the risk. So schedule and risk. These are the most important, which is the bread and butter of a project manager. And you should be like kind of uh, much more acquainted or much more uh, kind of uh, knowledgeable on these two aspects. Because this is something which will break or make your career, right? If you are able to do this, uh, like uh, I'll not say quickly, but efficiently that will make your life easier then the communication part right obviously any any project you take communication is take 80 percentage of your project manager's time right 80 percentage of the time only thing you will be doing because actually work will be done by the engineers or whichever type project right if it is a uh, it project it will be by those it engineers if it is let's say a digital marketing project it will be by those resources marketing resources but you will own that project right and you have to communicate with all so in the planning stage these are the few things which has to come into uh, your purview right so next class onwards we'll start discussing on the scheduling then we'll discuss on the costing part so project scheduling it will take three to four classes because there are different methods after this scheduling is over which will be part of resource management also, right? Uh, so I'll show maybe some free software I'll take and I'll try to show how actually scheduling happens. Same thing as a group, you have to different uh, software names. I think I have not given you yet. Once I give, select uh, any, of the, any of the software and try to create a schedule. I'll give you actual what you have to create. So once your presentation gets over, we'll start discussing on how to create project costing or budgeting. Then uh, actually we'll do the risk management. We'll come back and discuss on the quality management, right? So these are the few main concepts we are going to cover in the next uh, sessions, whatever we have left. So scope. So what do you mean by scope, right? What actually what need to be achieved through the project, right? Uh, develop and gain approval of general statement of the goal and business value of the project, right? So this is where, remember, like uh, in the first class exercise, right? Who is your stakeholder? Who is your customer? Who is your user, right? That need to be identified by the project manager. Because in charter, there was a high-level statement. Now, when you have something in your hand, project charter, that we need to accomplish this, then you have to go and find out who is actually the user. Who is going to give you the money who is going to the, be the project sponsor and what are actually the requirement right eliciting the true needs of the project that is where i was talking about the why part of it because somebody it is just a pet project they just thought about it and you are spending your next six months one year or two year of your time it will be a waste of all effort right documenting the project's needs so the, that why part need to be clearly mentioned negotiating with the sponsor senior management how these needs will be met because they will have like our customers they'll need everything with the lowest cost with the least possible time which might not be possible always so that is where the initial negotiation will happen right this is possible we do not have the technology capability right think about this way um, indian government wants to uh, bring a, a new fifth generation aircraft they will ask DRDO or HAL, take a project within five years. Uh, and unfortunately, that happens. And uh, I'm not blaming our scientists. They are one of the best in the world. But it takes time. We do not have the technology. We did not have that kind of investment. We took 20 years to develop a light commercial air aircraft, right? So if somebody, Indian government says that within the next five years, you built a fifth generation five-tier aircraft, it is not possible right 
so then that time whoever is the leader of that industry sorry that organization has to come forward and discuss that with the government it is not at all possible negotiate that what is possible and what is not possible right so writing a one page description of the project always start with that right so the problem happens somebody gives you a statement and you start uh, and i have seen other project managers also okay these are the resources this is the schedule that is the wrong approach to carry out a project start down why part of the project and on your own words what need to be achieved and then go to a meeting explain that to the stakeholders say that is my understanding correct right then only start with your scheduling and other things gaining senior management approval to plan the project right so this is where see i'm not the gaining senior management's approval on the project plan you have not prepared the plan so see what is written gaining senior management approval to plan the project now you will getting approval okay if this is understanding is correct now i will go ahead and plan the project project plan has not been created before that i'll say that okay is my understanding about the project is correct because unless that clarity and that's where the communication part and remember i think most of you within few months will be joining uh, different organizations in different roles the importance of documenting your meetings right any time you have a meeting with manager any time with your manager cross functional manager if there is a standard minutes of meeting they are sending it's okay if not make a habit to send a thank you mail thank you for this meeting or thank you for this discussion these were the point discussed if it is not about project it is a general corporate etiquette you have to maintain otherwise what happens obviously it is not the daily meetings you have to send daily i'm talking about the important meetings it is not that every time you meet you have to send a mail if you are meeting a daily three times it will be very erratic right uh, sending three mails to the same person but important meetings which happens maybe monthly or quarterly once with your manager senior management make sure that keeping record of those meetings right otherwise what happens sometimes people will say this has been discussed this has been clarified from my end right so that's where the documentation part comes so this is what we are mentioning here before starting the project planning itself go to the stakeholder say that is the why part need part what you told in the project charter is my understanding about that is correct right let's say whoever the project leader then that was interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, i forgot uh, that person's name but there is a it is little bit costly around 1200 rupees this is about how when they launched the apollo moon mission right uh, if you some of you have read about that story both uh, us and russia right uh, so they were in the stage of cold war just after world war and they were trying to be the superpower in the world russia has already developed the rocket technology they were the and some of them tell that they have uh, stolen that b2 concept from germany anyway that is a different story but uh, they had that kind of technology and usa under kennedy's leadership they wanted to be the faster because kennedy already in a uh, election rally or uh, somewhere in the speech he had told that we will be the first one right so that is something uh, just imagine a nation's leader he had already promised to the countrymen that we are going to achieve that why we are doing that we are the best country in the world and we are we are going to achieve the we will be the first country to send a space mission to moon right so now they came back and the ministry of defense called i forgot uh, next class i'll get his name and call that person i think he was that time a project leader in nasa and nasa ha- was running in a very small budget and uh, he was given one line statement we need to send people to moon within next 5 years or 3 years they were given that was the something one page document uh, and that was the document he was given and there is a nice book uh, not his autobiography but about that project uh, uh, sending uh, man to moon he has written that uh, so with that document he created whatever the like kind of starting with obviously budget exceeded and all those things 
but a country like USA, they had that kind of capability, technology and money to do that. That is a different thing. But what I'm trying to say is that the starting part, right? The objective need to be very clear why we are doing this and uh, uh, what, what we are going to do, right? Single line statement or at least a one pager has to be there talking about the why part of the project. So again, I will talk about the details of uh, statement of work and project scope statement. But before that, remember, and this will happen a lot. If some of you get into this kind of a role, project manager, either this will happen, scope creep or gold plating will happen. First, let me discuss the gold plating. All of you have gone through the sales and marketing curriculum and uh, if not all, most of you, right? The, the idea or the a philosophy of sales and marketing is that give customer more than they have said, right? So they kind of excite a customer, right? Or make them believe in our product, right? But when you talk about the from operational point of view, project, remember always the money part. Whatever has been agreed upon with the timeline, with the whatever uh, risk, whatever the challenges, cost, time, resources, that is the only part you need to deliver. Nothing more than that, nothing less than that. If you need to manufacture a mobile phone battery, or let's say this uh, electric vehicle battery, which will run for 200 kilometer per 12 hours charge, right? That is the only thing you need to deliver. In between, let's say that new technology came and you realize that, okay, if I integrate that, it will increase by 10 kilometers, right? Without proper, proper approval, do not do that. And that is where the gold plating happens. Because what happens, product managers will come, All right, why don't you make this feature a little bit of additional things in the website? Or something, let's say there is a new product being developed. Why don't you change the color of this? That will be much more better, right? And that is where the gold plating happens. In the process of making customer happy, we try to give more and more features, more and more things which are not required, right? Which has not been agreed upon. Goal plating is the adding extra functions or features to the product intentionally, which are not involved, defined in the original scope. In other words, goal plating is giving the customer more than what he and so he or she originally asked for, right? So that is where the philosophy differs. In the sales marketing, because most of the times your client or customers will be product manager, they'll come and say that, are you add this feature, add that feature. Do not do anything without proper documentation because you do not know by adding that additional features what will be the problem with the original group of features, right? So as a project manager, make sure that this doesn't happen without proper approval, right? Whatever the original scope you have to give. Second, here, what happens? Scope creep, right? It can happen multiple ways. Sometimes the customer might come back and say that, Are, we had forgotten to add this. Why don't you add this or this additional requirement? Or your uh, inner like top management, CEO or CMO or CTO, they might ask that, okay, uh, we are launching this in uh, website form, but nowadays if you see nobody is using website, why don't you parallelly launch a mobile version also, right, mobile app, right? So then without, so it is not that you should not do that. If customer is asking, your inner management is asking, you have to do that. But again, so that is where you remember controlling and monitoring. That is the difference between project execution and project control and monitoring. So whenever this kind of changes come, there is a process to take care of those changes. So there will be a board, there will be a team, change control board. You have to go through them, take those approval of changes and Again, recalculate what will be the effect on your cost, what will be effect on your resources, what will be effect on your time. So your project ideally actually is changing because it is no longer the, with the original scope, right? Do not do anything without proper approval, right? Then what is the difference between these two? Because definition wise, it looks same, right? There is a change in scope, there is a change in certain uh, kind of requirement or features, right? So if you see scope creep, most of the times it is something which either comes from the customer or from your inner management. So what is telling? Do not do anything without the approval part. 
right but the requirement or the changes or the creep creep is basically going side you edge right or something added something decrease something increase in those kind of things right these things generally initiated additional of features or functionality may be by the, your inner top management or by the customer right so the idea is do that but with proper approval right gold plating with your own without the customer requirement customer is not asking you right but you imagine that okay if i change the color if i add the additional button or if i add something additional feature customer will be more happy with your own logic judgment or assumption you make those changes when i say you means the team right the project team makes those changes that is known as gold plating you are giving something extra to the customer without changing without going through the proper process right difference is in the scope creep most of the time it generates it is generated by the customers additional need in the gold plating it is from your own side right is this definition clear or any any doubt on this so second part is when i say project scope obviously i have to write what need to be achieved right these are the things need to be done also do mention exclusions right what is not part of your project right so sometimes what happens if i have written what is part of the project obviously it is taken care if i start writing what is not part of the project i have to write about the world right oh, so that is understood no sometimes like i said in the first meeting or the first uh, few meetings when you are discussing with the customer customer might have assume that is given right and generally it happens if you some of you have gone through your this uh, uh, house construction project uh, i don't know how many of you actually involved most of the times your parents might have got involved in the house work right if you are building your own new house right and most of the times i have seen that is the uh, like kind of uh, point of conflict contractor will say the boundary building that wall around the house was not scope of the project my scope was only to construction of the house but generally house builders whoever is uh, trying to construct their own house they are assuming that oh, if you are building a house means uh, building a boundary is also taken care of right that is understood right or building that wall or building that uh, gate right so that is where the differences happen because something customers will believe that that is understood right so that need to be clearly mentioned these are the few things i am not going to do let's say if it is a let's say you have taken a construction project these are the things will be built and these are the not in my scope if you want to include in this scope these are the additional cost right so that need to be clearly mentioned right regarding your project what need what is included in the project and what is not part of the project right exclusion part so then a difference between so that sometimes you will hear about statement of work project scope statement right mostly in this kind kind of contractual document statement of work basically your overall kind of talking about your organization business needs again this has come from the discussion with your stakeholders project manager has gone that one page document right why part of it right high level product scope again in case of a product or if it is a software or a process you have to say that okay these are the few things we need to achieve by the end of the project project scope that the statement is a detailed document right maybe few hundred or thousand pages depending upon the project it includes everything what is the project scope product scope requirement boundaries deliverables acceptance criteria okay if i build this product or a project by the end like uh, last class somebody was asking highway project construction of highway it should not happen that after 100 kilometers of highway construction somebody will say come back and say that this is not as per the plan right what is the acceptance criteria and when it will get checked right so let's say the day uh weight of the road what kind of material how much load it should be here right all those things should be clearly mentioned what is the acceptance criteria constraint 
what are the things will restrict you to deliver the project right uh, construction project basically the weather pattern soil right or let's say the uh, something is political in nature might be the and those uh, sit like kind of village dwellers or wherever the road is going they might create a problem right most of the infrastructure project have that kind of trouble right and back from environmentalist and all those people right assumptions milestones cost estimations specifications configuration management approval requirement so it is not that you have to remember everything saying that uh, what are the included in project scope statement but uh, remember the difference it is a short statement few pages high level product scope project scope this is a detailed document including each and everything about the project right so that uh, that should be the uh, differences between these two so once you have so we start with the statement of work charter then project scope statement right so once you know that what you need to achieve right so they then you start something called the project breakdown structure so sometimes if project is very big you will state that okay so let us complete this in four phases or three phases right then first phase these are the requirement think about the vaccination drive right uh, india's vaccination drive or whatever throughout the world right for a particular vaccination two sorts or three sorts right so rather than taking them together or the development part right so okay we in the first phase we will do this uh, pilot it do the testing do the trial then once we clear it out then the first uh, dosage of vaccine will go then after 3 months or 1 month second dosage of vaccination will go it is the same project but under that there are two phases right first sort then second sort right then for each of them you clear clear create a work breakdown structure right what do you mean by work breakdown structure yeah, hierarchical representation of activities here you start with the project scope say that okay these are the high level activities we have to complete under that what are the detailed activities right it will be listed down so what are the part or what are the things we need to take care when we are creating a work breakdown structure estimation part how many resources are required uh, what are the kind of time they will take to complete the work then what kind of additional uh, requirements are there let's say equipment might be required uh, infrastructure might be required think about any time a building construction large construction uh, is coming in your neighborhood so uh, people will be staying there for those construction worker will be staying there for next 3 months 6 months or 1 year right so temporary buildings need to be arranged right so for that also some construction has to happen right so everything need to be estimated there right logical network plan which will come up before what which will come after what right which are the activities need to be accomplished first what kind of approval i have to take any kind of construction or any kind of work some approval need to be completed first before you start anything so that has to come that you need to have that kind of experience right so that is one of the thing which will come from experience uh, of project manager resource planning sometimes resource might not be available like in this particular case uh, last class what we are saying so what to do if you do not have resources will you wait for the resources to start or will you like discard the project basically sometimes if resources are not there some projects will get postponed for next year right time schedule then budgeting so time schedule and budgeting again parallel it is not that you create a schedule then budgeting again these two to be honest all these things happen parallelly right uh, it is not the sequence and you start with estimation logical network plan so one by one it is never happens all of them happens parallelly so the idea is uh, start with the major project areas to be accomplished write down what need to be achieved then divide the project areas into actionable pieces of work right because see uh, if i say that uh, construct or send this so uh, our objective is to send a space vehicle to uh, space and bring it back right under that there can be many stages or phases okay so first phase may be okay in the first phase let us try to send it and just bring it to the and so that it falls on the sea right or the low water bodies second phase may be 
if you are able to do that because we have not constructed a rocket earlier now we know that we can send a rocket to space and now we can locate it wherever it is lined up second stage is okay we'll build a platform and try to put it there still in the ocean because if it lands on the like uh, breaks down on land it will create a huge uh, hubris right uh, this fire and all those things so that may might be my second phase third phase or in the final phase i'll try to send the rocket and bring it down to the earth and put it on a land platform right which is the final stage then again for each phase i have to see that okay what can be achieved in the what kind of approval i need what kind of technology is available right what kind of resources are required right what kind of equipment material is required where to actually do the testing all these things to be at a very high level then you start breaking down okay for a, to build a rocket these are the five or six modules that need to be a burner module then a motor module and all those things like that i have to write down five or six modules okay for the first module to build what are the detailed activities right so see like we are breaking down a high level activity our project objective into six or whatever number of high level deliverables and for each deliverable we are again breaking down right so that list of hierarchical list of activities is nothing but your work breakdown structure right so as the name suggests you are breaking down your work to a manageable extent so that you can assign resources you can calculate the cost of completing the project right so we start with the project objective then we divide into a uh, high level work right high de high level deliverables that is known as work breakdown structure element w e b s work breakdown structure elements these are the high level project deliverables each of them again divided into work package work packages can be divided into activity activities can be into tasks right so generally up to work package is necessary right sometimes if bigger projects are there you have to divide into activity and task otherwise at work package level uh, things can be done uh, then uh, do you have clear accountability for each work package right so when is accountable see project manager is not responsible right and we'll see that differences between uh, all those what does responsibility and what does accountability means work package in the sense is who is going to do this so let's say this is a uh, for a construction project this is the painting work who will carry out the painting or let's say electrical work who will do the electrical work right so those will be work packages are there a start and end events so for each of them you have to say that when that work will start work package will start when they will end can you easily estimate time and cost so that is the definition of work package unless you are able to define a work package and determine how much it will take you to kind of uh, complete that work package that means it is not a, you have not gone through that detail is there a clearly defined activity list in some cases work package again need to be detailed further through activity and task so think about a internet project okay so we are creating a internet for our college or maybe for your company right so internet means it will be accessible to the only people who have that login and password and they can so internal employees right so that is the meaning of internet internal resources are employees so to create a internet project right what are the things that to be done concept right website design website development rollout and support these are the five phases right concept under concept evaluate current system what kind of existing systems available define requirement so these are the different items under concept similarly under website design also we can put different level of activities for each of them right again under level 3 we can define requirement define user requirement define content requirement define system requirement define server owner requirement right so for each of level 2 activities we can define it to again level 3 activities again it is like distributed or divided into smaller component level 1 is basically major objective areas or categories then level 2 is again yeah. one yeah yeah so what is rollout sir rollout means launching right so you okay. open it for your public or those employees launch basically website launch 
level 3 is continued to break down into deliverable into action items right see the lowest level associated with a branch in a hierarchy is referred to as work status for any project the lowest level of group of activities which you can estimate the cost or estimate the time that is known as the work package so some cases generally uh, again it is not that mandatory that everybody takes the definition so then uh, most of the time the definition of work package is anything which is between one day to eight day sorry one day to 10 day eight hours to 80 hours any type of group of activities which take so i cannot i should not divide more than less than one day right so if there are certain activities which is taking less than one day i should group them so work package is group of activities which generally takes uh, eight hours to 80 hours right so that is one definition uh, i'll to give you another example which actually nasa do right uh, they follow so they define by cost any group of activities which is costing them let's say one lakh dollar so that will be work package below that they will not depend they'll just say that okay these are the activities uh, these are the general guidelines can be realistically and confidently estimated so you should be clear that okay somebody should not that um, should not be in a position that i do not understand this part right if i just say that okay uh, for my house construction work uh, wall uh, kind of uh, building a wall outside my house that is a work package right that is the cost and all those things need to be mentioned. again under that there will be activities but it should be in a position so that whoever is constructing it, right? You should be in a position to understand it, right? Or if required, I have to put those additional details. If you understand what do you mean by wall, you have to mention the height, uh, width, what kind of material, how much depth it should have, whether it should have iron poles in between, all those things need to be clearly defined, right? Generally, eight to 80 hours, but again, it is not that every company uh, kind of goes about it like here i say nasa has uh, maximum three months duration so here if you see eight hours that is three months duration because obviously they're working on very complex project right and not exit one lakh dollars has a meaningful conclusion and deliverable this is important so work package is not activity if i say that uh, uh, think about you in your life what you are doing right if i'm getting a certification let's say you do certain courses i think right getting a certification or let's say your uh, whatever in this case mba completing this that is a deliverable right at the end you are achieving something so your work package should be like that but under that it can be again activities right so you have to complete certain project assignment so that is activity you have to go through your interim evaluation that is activity you have to complete whatever internal assignment uh, clear your doubts, prepare, read, right? Those will be your activities. But your work package will be elective, whatever this uh, project management, completion of project management elective. That is your work package. Under that, you can put your, what are the activities and tasks you need to complete to complete the work package, right? Similarly, you have 14 or 18 or 30 work packages. All them combined at the end, it will give you a MBA degree, right? So for each of them, you have already completed some of the work and you are going through the final stages of certain work packages. Maybe outsourced and contracted, obviously, at least for the MBA, you cannot do that. But yes, uh, in some cases, IT companies do that, right? Maintenance work. So some of the work packages, they outsource to a separate company. They will complete the work packages for them, right? Let's say you are developing certain mobile phone. Uh, Apple is developing certain new iPhones rather than developing a new camera right on their own uh, designing or developing a new camera uh, mobile camera they can outsource to sony or some bigger company who has experience in that right so that will be the outsourcer so work package should be in a format that it can be given to some third party company right the size of the work packages also relates to reporting periods and project control right so it should help you to a project manager because see, whenever a project manager is going and reporting it to a stakeholder. So it is not that every day, every few weeks or two weeks or maybe in a one month, he is going there and reporting it. So what he should report that, okay, we had a hundred work packages or 
300 work packages to complete. Till now, we have completed 100 work packages. We are running behind on 20 work packages. Balance 80 are running fine, right? Then why, why we are running behind on those 20 work packages? He should explain, right? So ideally, each time he is going to meet the stakeholders. He should be in a position to say that, okay, some work packages has been completed, right? So that will define the frequency of meeting with your stakeholders, right? So that, uh, and that is where, uh, when you discuss about the Scrum meeting and uh, Sprint, we'll discuss why those are designed on those seven days or 10 days uh, time period. Again, this is for the traditional or the waterfall model. So then again, uh, up to this point, any, any questions or any doubt? Sir, who all at the companies uh, where the work can be outsourced? The work any, com companies outsourced. It's not about the companies, right? Depending upon the work, if you, you do not have resources, technology, you have to outsource that work, right? It doesn't depend upon a company. Let's say these big construction companies, LNT or Tata Power or uh, G, right? It is not necessarily that they are doing all the work. They get a government contract and some part of the work they outsource to smaller contractors. Uh, same thing with any defense organizations. Same thing with your IT companies. Almost all the IT companies, unless they're startups, they outsource. Even think about in this way, IBM will outsource some of the work to TCS or Infosys. TCS and Infosys will outsource some of the work to smaller startups, right? Whenever you do not have resources, or technology, you will outsource that work, right? So it is not that uh, it is company specific. Any company, whenever they know that. But again, there are different, uh, some things, when you say outsource, uh, remember what we're discussing, outsourcing, offshoring, all those concepts. Sometimes there will be a legal requirement. Uh, NASA cannot outsource some activity to ISRO, right? Because that is a space technology, right? So they will, so there will be a legal requirement country specific, whenever they're outsourcing something, it has to be a USA company, right? And there is a question, I think somebody was asking that, uh, why you don't hire from India, right? Uh, because supposedly we are better in engineering and math. The question is, uh, they cannot hire uh, somebody who doesn't have a US nationality, right? So those kind of restrictions will come, but any company can outsource, it is not company specific, clear? Yes, sir. Again, there are th different types of, uh, so the, again, this is not the lim only three. There are other types also, but we'll focus on these three. That should be enough. Uh, how you divide your work, right? Let's say I have to complete a bicycle. So new bicycle, which will be like easy to like kind of uh, ergonomically designed so that it will not uh, put pressure on your foot or uh, thigh muscle and all those things. So that is my new design of bicycle, right? So how should I divide? How should I go about planning or scheduling, right? Obviously, once I know that I have to design this kind of new bike, right? New bicycle. How I divide my work, right? So high level work to small level work. I can define by, okay, let me go by one by one. Product oriented. What I need to achieve, right? To construct a bicycle, there are different components, right? So frame is a component. Gear is another component. Suspension is another component. Brake is another component. Again, there can be other components also. Just for example, I, let's say I have taken these four components. So what I'll tell, I'll go by the product-oriented work breakdown structure, right? So remember what we discussed, level one, two, three, right? These are my level one. So for frame, construction of frame, what are the activities I need to do? So maybe one activity might be procuring the steel rods or whatever the raw material required, a new titanium alloy kind of material testing it, painting it, bending it, whatever the work is required to create a frame, right? So those will be activities to create a frame, right? But how am I defining my work? I'm defining product-wise or component-wise. So my high-level work is to construct a bicycle, right? And to construct a bicycle, these are the four major component I have to construct, right? So that is a product-oriented. These are the so once I get those components, I'll assemble it. My final bicycle will be ready, right? So that is one way to divide the work. Second way to divide is function-oriented, right? 
depending upon which are the teams which are the resources who will be working on that project you can divide the work what will be the work of a manufacturing so who are the people who will be working from manufacturing team and what are the things they are going to do right what are the purchasing activities because you have to purchase procure new raw material new component so what will be their activities what will be the activities of assembly line those people who are in the assembly line what are the activities of quality control right then here also i can put sales marketing hr like that different functions whether they have certain activities so this bicycle project also i can divide the work depending upon teams right what are the functions function means different functions different teams who will be working on that project what kind of work they are going to do last one is process oriented to get me this final product what kind of processes need to be completed maybe prototype construction is one so the first part or the first step will be prototype construction then laboratory testing then different type of testing the inside indoor testing then outdoor testing so there are different processes right need to be completed before finally delivering the project right so there are same work but different approach to complete the project or divide the work into different components right so this is one is product oriented i understand the project as a combination of different components completion of different components or it can be function oriented i understand the project as a work from different teams right in that case i'll take divide the work by different team or i'm understand the project as completion of different processes so process wise i'll divide the work right is this part clear or in any doubt Sir, here in this case, is there any hierarchical level of activities? Yes. So, so once, so these are all level of one work which is mentioned here, right? For each of them, again, you have to divide. So, under frame, if I say for a construction of frame, what are the activities required? So, for frame, maybe you need to procure raw material. So, that is one activity. You need to test the raw material. You need to kind of paint the raw material. Then it will go to assembly line and get constructed, right? So then those will be again might be divided into sub-level activities. So these are all the high-level work which is mentioned. For each of them again, you have to divide. Yes, sir. So let's say this is my project planning page. Define the problem. This is the level one work, right? Level one, then I'm dividing. How I'm going to define my the problem. So remember what we discussed. It will go to the user and meet with them. Meet with users, determine scope, write statement of business benefit, write statement of need, define statement of system capability, develop context diagram, right? So these are the second level activities which I need to complete as a project manager, right? So this is basically for the kind of project manager. He is creating his own plan to complete the activities. So then uh, against activities, you have to mention the number of days, number of resources required. Along with project manager, program manager, or portfolio leader will be there to help him. Sometimes the finance, if you're doing something on the feasibility, estimate tangible cost, benefits, cost benefit analysis, here you might require resources from finance team also, right? So to answer your question, for each high level activity, you have to divide into sub level activities. But the general idea is it should not go below one day, right? I, ideally, whenever you are creating, so this should be meet with you just two days, right? Our idea is anything between eight hours to 80 hours, one day to 10 days, right? So work package, that top level activity might get into activity list, activity list. Then activity list, once you put your resources, right? That will give create to project schedule. Once I know that, this is the list of activities need to be completed. Then I start putting who are the resources. So that is one uh, question generally comes. When will you know that your schedule is complete? So once I have work packages, I divide into activities. Once I assign my resources, right, to those activity in my project plan, then I know that my schedule is created, right? So this, this snapshot I've taken from Microsoft project. So, so there is a structure of work breakdown structure. Here you define code. What does code means? 
this number one one point one. So how detail you will get into right? So that you have to define accordingly. Your uh, project management software will create that many numbers. Let's say I have to create hundred work packages, two hundred work packages. So initially when I'm creating that schedule, I have to mention that okay, I need to create hundred work packages. One, two, three, four like that. That will help us. So don't worry about that. Uh, that is again depends from software to software. Uh, next is WBS dictionary. In some cases, like I said, your definition might not be clear, right? If I say that building a wall around my house, that is a work package because it will take maybe one day to a ten day max, right? But each definition, when I say wall, uh, what is the depth, width, height, what kind of material will be required? So all these things need to be mentioned, right? Obviously, in the schedule, if I start mentioning that, that will be a word document. That will not be a schedule, right? Because that uh, title or the deliverable will be maybe five or ten words. But if I start defining everything in that uh, Excel or uh, MS Project or any software, it will not be possible to write all the details, right? So that is where the WBS dictionary helps us, right? So it will define the so each work package. What is the work package number? What are the acceptance criteria? When I'll know that, when I'll say that, yes, now you have constructed my work. This is the height. This is the material construction should be constructed. Iron poles to be every three feet. Then uh, some glasses to be put on the top of the wall. All those things were my acceptance criteria. You have done that, right? Deliverables, assumptions, who is doing work, duration, schedule milestones. So these things, just say that all these details need to be part of our package. But if I start putting that in my schedule, Nobody will be able to read my schedule for each of the work package. If I start putting details, so it will take like kind of uh, thousand pages, right? My schedule should be so easy so that I can put on my screen and see that, right? So that's why to make our life easy, most of the software I have this concept called WBS dictionary, right? So each of them uh, work packages will have a WBS dictionary, which will say that what does that work package means, right? Uh, everybody clear on this or any, any doubt, doubt? So next part is the activities, right? Once you have work packages, you say that, okay, from which department, which resource will do this work, right? So that is the kind of resource alignment right remember what i said your schedule only will say that you have created your schedule once you say that you have aligned a resource right so again resources like i said in the beginning resources not necessarily they will be reporting to you right they might be from different departments uh, think about this one this is a, a project where we have different work packages right basic design hardware part a hardware part b like that there are different uh, for that software applications right then different level of work packages under that. Now what we'll say, under design division, there are three departments, hardware, software, and drawing. From hardware, which resource will work on this kind of basic design, right? So I am aligning, I'm putting, okay, resource, this type A resource will work on this kind of work. Type B resource will work on that kind of that. So in your project plan, that should be clearly mentioned. Because once you put that, now you'll know that, okay, I need to complete my project. I need uh, 10 hardware engineers, one software architect, 200 Java developers, or sorry, 100 Java developers, 50 testers like that. So your resource calculation will be then uh, kind of, you'll be able to calculate. Otherwise, what will happen? You just have list of activities. Once you start putting resources, right? Saying that, okay, for developing a website, which kind of resources you require. You might require HTML or whatever right now you are designing a website with, right? That resource skill is required, right? And how much time, maybe eight days or 10 days, right? Then you go back and ask that uh, functional manager that, okay, I need your resource for next 15 days, 30 days or two months, right? So it will help you to get that resource clarity and accordingly you can estimate resource. So this is what I was talking about, a responsibility X, accountability consult inform. This is a standard metrics. Any project need to be uh, clearly mentioned, right? 
and most of the times problem happens when this has not been mentioned so in your project plan whenever you are creating for each of those activities it to be clearly mentioned who is responsible for that right so what does uh, this uh, definitions mean responsible the person who is actually doing that activity right the individual who actually completed the task right the when you are assigning that resource he is responsible to complete the task right accountable this is the most of the times accountability lies like i said with the project manager any wrong thing happens even the engineering is doing a mistake he is responsible but at the end if there is a scheduled delay you will be held accountable because your work is to make sure that whatever mistakes and all those things it will be rectified and completed within time right so accountability most of the times lies with the uh, project manager consult some of the experts some of the higher management they will be in the consulting right so when is a consult it is not that you are going to ask them advice right it is such that sometimes what happens they are the people who might connect with you with other people right some of the sponsors right to go and take their help take their uh, get their connection right let's say you, on the whatever uh, space project and all those things right so there will be people who will be able to help you right so they sometimes whenever you find difficulty you go and take help from them right uh, then again sometimes these are the people who also take the decision right let's say uh, the the reje require request from uh, customer that okay why don't you create additional few things in my website so these are the people who will take decision whether we need to consider that if we consider then what will be the impact on your schedule cost and all those things right then inform there will be always some people which you need to inform right it is they are not part of your project they will be maybe a ceo or cto level but they will try to understand what is going on this project maybe every 3 months or 6 months you go and present in front of them saying that okay this is the project status right they might not detail understand have a detail understanding about your project but at the end they should be informed right so for each of your project you should have a clarity that obviously accountable means you right the project manager or the program manager he is the accountable person right anything good happens bad happens he is accountable who is responsible whom to consult in case of some approvals are required and whom to keep informing and sometimes what might seem that uh, inform uh, sometimes we forget certain people right by mistake and later on it creates a big problem uh, i was working in a project it is a new product development project right so what i thought whenever packaging work happens right so any towards the end of the uh, project will go and contact the packaging team that okay we are need a packaging because it was a long project 18 months around right so towards the end why to like start kind of right now we are anyhow like busy with the work then later on actually when we went after around 12 months or 13 months we realized that we should have included them in the beginning because they could have helped us in some additional thing which we which we did miss actually in the beginning right and that is where something like again not necessarily it should not happen that all your company employees should be uh, informed right that is not required but again with your experience with your uh, again like advice from your uh, stakeholder will come to know that whom actually you should keep in information loop right so that's about it uh, how much time we have left okay anyhow like uh, we are already over time but uh, there are few interview question i just wanted to go through so quickly uh, so if i ask you define a ideal project up to this point what we have discussed not necessarily today's discussion so what will be the de definition of uh, ideal project any any one of you if uh, somebody ask you define a ideal project what will be your definition again remember i'm not asking definition of a project definition of project is that temporary and deviate to achieve a certain objective through a project process or a whatever uh, you are going to create right taking certain resources or cost but when i say ideal project 
as a person what do you mean by ideal project for you can you all share the slide uh, go through it yeah one an ideal project is a project where a proper communication between the client and the company for the execution of the project which is shared by the company to the client with all the details which is made by the company to the client uh, which which follow the hierarchy from top level to bottom level which includes proper planning execution management and uh, financial terms and also okay anyone else want to make it give it try sir a project with a definite start date and end date the time period of that project Ah, so that is the minimum requirement of a project, right? So it should have a start date, end date. Uh, it should have certain resources, a cost, effort. It should achieve something, right? Either through a product or a process improvement. So at the end, you should achieve something, right? It should not be day-to-day -day operation. That is the like definition of a project. But if I say what actually means a ideal project for you, because you have gone through, it can be a personal project or a professional project. What you have done, right? So at the end, what you should achieve? What, like, what is the definition of an ideal project for you personally? Sir, project scope is uh, mentioned properly with proper uh, work breakdown structures. That I think. Okay. Uh, do you remember what we discussed about uh, the difference between product quality and uh, project quality? Is there a difference? So let's say I'm developing this new mobile phone, iPhone, right? So that is the project, right? At the end, my deliverable is new iPhone, whatever the new number. So do you think that there is a difference of product quality and project quality? You said there can be. What will be the difference? Anyway, like we'll discuss these questions. So uh, if you have time in the next class, I have shared with you. I just going through Google uh, recently for some interviews uh, and I got those questions. So if you have any doubt, we can discuss in the next class. And any last question? Sir, attendance. Roll number? 230. 230, okay. Sir, mine also 209. 209, 230, okay. Anyone else? Okay.